get okay. that, that too. It does nothing but help. Helps you, helps you roll around you. Yeah, no, like there's been talk that there's been talk that there's gonna be like a third vaccine. Like, okay, I'll fucking do it. I've had enough of the world dying. Not just dying, just going crazy. People going crazy in panic. Yeah, no, it's it's so annoying that there's those people who say, it's my body. It's like, uh, okay, well, good for you, yeah, your, but your body... Your body, you can choose to make it suffer less. Yeah, not to mention, your body, whatever it reacts to, will not have much of a contagious effect to everybody else around you. So you're doing everybody else a favor and not just yourself. Yeah, but well, the thing is, <laughs> here's the thing, even if you are vaccinated, you can still catch COVID, you can still spread COVID, so you need to keep wearing your mask and doing all the safety precautions. It just won't have as much of a, like, a horrible yeah, effect. Yeah, it just won't have as as hard-hitting of symptoms, yeah. Yeah. No, that's why, like, I, like, you guys have seen it before, but as we're still live, like, I've seen, like, those karma videos, and one of which is a dude who's, like, streaming on his phone, and he's like, fuck your mask, and he's at, like, this, this, this pawn shop of some sort, and he sees a hat and he wants to buy it, but after his attitude, they won't let him purchase it, which, to them, they are in the fucking right to do that. They're just saying, get out. You wear your mask or you get out. And if they're not going to cooperate, or if he's not going to cooperate, then don't be there. So he refuses to leave. And it's just like, can I just buy the hat? No. You fucked up, buddy. No, yeah, if you he don't just follow continues. the regulations, you do not get to enjoy the service. Yeah, and he even goes as far as to say, like, it's Arizona. We don't have to wear masks. It's a store policy, you numb nuts. Yep. Yeah, even if there's no mask mandate for the area... An individual business can still lay down the rules for what you do on their private property. Yeah. And then the like, biggest... If, if they laid out a rule that you're not allowed to wear a shirt in the building that says fuckwad, they have the right to kick you out of the store. Why would somebody even want to wear that, that kind of shirt anyway? If they don't, they can kick you out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, the thing that's always satisfying is that right near the end, a police officer comes in and he's like, no, you have the opportunity to leave. Put your hands behind your back. You're under arrest. It's like, yeah. Oh, that I is see. the... Yeah, myth, yeah, no, Myth, I remember you watched it. No, like, I see what everything he says oh, is like... that. Uh, I was gonna name something else. Go ahead. Oh. No, go ahead. Did you, do, you need to finish? No, we were talking about, um, you know, the guy who refuses to wear a mask. He's like, I just want to embrace... <sighs> I had to finish up the chip. Good? Yeah, I'm good. Oh. Um, so trying to pick up where I was, trying to figure out what it was that I was talking about. Um, the video with the guy. Yeah, and like he's like, "Can I just buy the hat?" And a lot of us, we were like, "No, get out! <laughs> just get the fuck out, you, you numb nuts!" Not follow the regulations. You do not well, get uh, to if enjoy all, the if He just fucking left when they told him he wouldn't have gotten arrested. Yeah. It's that fucking simple. They told you to leave. You said no. All right, cool. Now you've gone to trespassing. Yeah, no, he was oh, doing this for this like one... eight minutes. Go ahead. So this one particularly satisfying video. It also took quite a while, like several minutes. That uh, This woman was removed from a store for not wearing a mask. The police were called. Two officers were interviewing her. And she kept just completely denying all of the facts they were throwing at her. Like, no, you can't yeah. arrest me for that. No, you're not arrested for being detained. It's like, okay, but yada yada, I don't have to tell you my name. It's like, no, if you're detained, you do have to tell us your name, like, authenticate the fact that you called us, because that's just procedure. If you don't, you can be taken in, yada yada. And she's like, no, you have no right. You don't know the law, because you're the police, yada yada. They're, they're actually being respectful, listening to her, trying to just give her the information of, no, you called the police, this is the procedure, you have to tell us your name and this and that. And it gets to a point, like, like five, six minutes into this, and they're standing outside, out, out, in front of the store. The police are talking calmly, and they're talking like this, like she's lecturing everyone, like, you don't understand, you're not as smart as me. She doesn't say you're not as smart as me, but still. And there's a point where, like, like, she's talking about what happened in the store while she got kicked out. Then there's a point where she is like, like, uh, the people in charge of this country, and the cops just share a look. And then one comes up, grabs her, gets both hands. She's like, what's going on? It's like, no, nope, not playing this game. You're done. <laughs> they, they gave her every chance 
to just cooperate with them. She was being so stubborn. It's like, no, no, you're now under arrest. <laughs> not playing this game. <laughs> we are not playing these games anymore, Karen. We we are willing to work with you and your dumb attitude, but nope, not playing this game anymore. It's like, nope, we're not going to let your grandstand turn this into a big political soapbox speech. No, nope, as not playing as this du game. as Dusk would say, nope. <laughs> Nope, nope, no, 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 Just hold on, nope. Oh, good, someone comes out. No, I still, I still, like, one of my favorite Karen stories is always the, uh, the Starbucks one, uh, Amber Gillis. Oh, yeah, you say that a little lot. Oh, yeah. No, like, she still continued her, like, she continued her stupid, um, crusade. Her donate to me thing. No, she continued going around at other places saying, did you know that wearing masks can cause mouth decay? It's like, um, n first off, no. your fucking teeth, idiot. Yeah. Did you know that believing bullshit without doing your research can cause brain decay? Oh, I'm sorry, do I need to use smaller words for you? <laughs> it can cause smooth brain. Maybe Still next not simple time enough. I should make it in macaroni art so you can understand it. Like, clearly that's the only level of uh, visual media that gets through to you. <laughs> macaroni art and crayons. Like, you, you can teach a preschooler that they need to wash their hands and just be clean and health conscious. Like, cover their mouth when they cough and sneeze. Four-year-olds understand this in one minute. Why are grown adults who are allowed to drive and vote, why can they not understand just keep your germs to yourself? Because they think they're because above everybody else. Because them. it inconveniences them, and they're the most important people in the world, don't you realize? Oh my god, I didn't I, realize. I, I'm an ignoramus for not realizing, oh my god. Uh, ignoramus? Oh, I mean, not alive. I don't understand Cancel. how the world works. Cancel. Cancel. Cancel right now. Career done. You're no done. apology is good enough for assuming that uh. you can keep your germs to yourself. You know, like like a four year old is capable of. My God, I think I'm so sorry. ignorant. I think the most telling thing mm. is that fucking, and like I know it's an everywhere thing that people are against it, but I think the most telling thing about the mindset is that in the states, you've got kids that need to go into schools with stab vests and shit because of, oh, yeah. you know, all that kind of fucked up stuff that can go on. And they have to do this. So kids are willing to wear, you know, stab vests, bulletproof shit, so they remember don't fucking mass die. Remember when yeah. mass shootings were a problem? But, the oh, moment yeah. a gro but it's like, the moment a grown fucking adult has to wear a face mask that isn't a stab vest or a bulletproof vest, they throw a tantrum that is bigger than anything any of their kids could possibly manage. Now, to be fair, I have seen the opposite end on this uh, in person, where I had, uh, we had just closed my restaurant, um, and guy who had just left, he was like the last person to leave, because he scheduled a reservation at closing. And we, we cleaned off his table super quick and kind of just went about our way. And came back, and he asked us uh, if we saw hand sanitizer on the table. So we all kind of asked around if, like, one of us had seen the hand sanitizer. And the person that cleaned off the table said, yeah, I, I threw it away. It's the end of the night. It's like a little Shit. tiny thing of hand sanitizer. You get out the dollar mm -hmm. store. I'm not shitting you when I say this man blew up at all of us, including our manager, for not holding the dollar store hand sanitizer and compared it to his phone saying, well, if I had left my phone on the table, would you have thrown that away too? You were going to be no, a big bitch baby wouldn't. about it, maybe. Well, you, well that depends. <laughs> did, you did you fucking pay a dollar for it at the fucking dollar store? Is it a 99 That's cent right. phone for like candy? I was the head hostess, so, and I looked so done, because it was the end of the night, I was ready to leave, and here I am dealing with bullshit when our doors are closed. So I looked at him and said, sir, a dollar store hand sanitizer is a little bit more important, is a little less important than con your phone. So no, we wouldn't have thrown it away. He's like, yeah, but it's inconvenience. And I'm like, it's more of an inconvenience of you wasting gas to come back up here for a $2 hand sanitizer. You want five dollars? Uh, buy another one. Here's five dollars. Hey, here's five dollars to buy four more. Tax like, included. Keep so the change. I'm... Keep the change, you filthy animal.
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I told him, like, if we had kept every single hand sanitizer bottle that was left at the end of the night, we would have 30 at the end of the night because that's how we'd, many we throw away. Do you want to give start them out the masks too? We like, would we'll, give them we'll out with the me. checks, like mints. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Uh, you could have held it for me. I'm like, yeah, and you could buy a new one. You can hold these nuts you. for me. You yeah. could have, you could have just not left it in the first place. Yeah. If it was like, so important to you, why'd you leave it behind? Also, I am concerned what kind of person put so much importance on dollar store hand sanitizer. We were betting that it was fu probably fucking alcohol in this hand sanitizer bottle. That's why you won. Oh, uh, fair, fair. We're putting money on it. We we fair, seen that's worse. vodka. Yeah. Just vodka in the hand sanitizer bottle. Just like he's gonna take it up on his plane trip. Fucking, I, I can imagine like if one of you brought that up, he's just like, "This is the principle of the man." He's like, "Uh huh." What was really in that hand sanitizer? If I forgot my phone, would you throw it away too? Is your phone secretly a flask? Is your phone a flask? Is it plastic and full of Honestly, cheap candy? Should, it'd have been really funny if you just fucking took a shot in the dark and like, yeah, nice try, buddy. We know about the drugs. Get in the flask. <laughs> Just, just to see how he would have reacted. Just, God. just to, just, just throw him for a fucking loop. Honestly, it probably wouldn't have surprised me if he ran, because they're... Okay, I work at a nice restaurant. Doesn't mean this nice restaurant is in the best location, so we got some crazies that come in, as mm. well as tourists who are drunk. We had a guy, and I'm not even kidding you, this was a two-day-long experience, had a guy come in, and there's an entrance on our third Managers. floor, but our third floor, <laughs> yeah, our third floor also has an, uh, you have to go downstairs, but it also has our kitchen, so you could, or not kitchen, our dishwasher room, so you could literally just go in and walk into our dishwasher room, and if nobody knows you, who's gonna okay, stop you? Who's gonna stop you? The man, the man came in through our third floor. We think he stole an apron from the third floor, went Whoa. all the way downstairs to the first floor, started messing with stuff on the host stand, which got my attention because I was currently like cleaning a table and I like rushed over to see what he was messing with because our tablets aren't really like, chained up to anything. So I walked over there, greeted him. He greeted me, walked over to one of our televisions, I'm not even kidding when I say he was like a foot away from it, started staring at it for like 30 minutes. We're closing. So I kind of eventually go up to him and go, hey, uh, you know, we're closing soon. He goes, oh yeah, thank you for letting me know. And he walks away. Come the next day, he comes into the restaurant claiming he works there. And when our manager tells him he doesn't, he throws a chair at our manager. Apron? Yeah, he, he oh, was shit. still in the apron. He was in the same clothes he was in yesterday. You stole one of our aprons and now you're coming in lying to us. Yeah, Never... it's like, he threw a chair at our manager because <gasps> my manager told him he didn't work there. Bit of an extreme reaction. In other words, <laughs> called him out for lying. <laughs> also, send him to fucking jail for that shit. That, that's oh, serious we did. stuff. We banned that... from the store, we called the police, but it was just... Yeah. It was just, oh, just steal an apron. That's how you get a job. <laughs> yeah. We, when no. I worked at a gas station, uh, the cashier was told, if anyone checks out with, like, serious alcohol in their breath, they're acting that weird, uh, they walk out of the store, especially if they get a, into a vehicle, we are absolutely allowed and encouraged to call the police and say, yeah, this store, someone, yeah, now, come on over. You, get, you guys ever get those customers where it just sounds like every word they're saying to you, they're just mumbling it, and you're just like, what? Yep. Yes. Every time when I'm working at the supermarket. And you, and you can't fucking ask them to speak up, because if you fucking do, then it's like, oh god, can't you pay attention? God, kids, these days so far. Maybe yeah. if you fucking spoke in a fucking octave that I can fucking hear. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't speak in dog frequency, you fucking bitch. Oh, my, my <laughs> supervisor used to do that so much. I think that everybody thinks that they are right and that they do not do any wrong. Those are my favorite, favorite fucking people, because... Whoever... Whoever said the customer is always right was a fucking liar. Yes, yes thank yes. you. No, like last Dude, night, 
Who last night I was the customer, honestly. Yeah, no. Last night when I was uh, when I was working, I spoke to one of the other employees, and we're like, he uh, he also mentioned about that whole thing about customers are always the ones being right. He says, I don't believe in that shit. It's like the customers are not always right. I'm gonna say that right now. They're not always right. They just have a right to know whatever it is that they are after or what they're looking for. And if we don't the have what they're looking pays. for, that's yeah. that's more accurate. There we go. The customer pays. The customer's not always right. The customer pays. You know how many times... Like, okay, uh, my job, we put logos and and, uh, just other stuff on clothing. You know how many times I've gotten an order that says put this on the sleeve, and I go through all the different types of shirts, and there's like five tank tops? It's like, how do I... They they want this on all the sleeves. Yeah, everyone. They paid for every one of those to get logoed. Yeah, these five don't have sleeves. Okay, leave those blank. Yep, figure. Great, thank you. They, they don't even know what they ordered sometimes. Uh, or they'll buy it for, like, they'll buy something from a certain company that already has, like, the clothing producer's logo in a space, and they're like, put our logo in the space. I'm like, why? The clothing producer has a logo sewn on to the item in that area. You're going to need to put your company's logo somewhere else. Oh, I didn't know. Did you look at the shirts when you ordered them? No. That's why the why. hell not? Uh, what are you stupid? I, uh, I had a, a shitty experience with a customer um, way back in the morning. I was since I work produce, I cut shit. I basically work the wet rack. This dude comes up to me and he's like, "Hey, do you have this certain item?" And bear in mind, usually in our store, we just get the usuals. We don't get any random exotic items. So I tell him, "Sir, I don't know what that item is. Can you mind explaining to me what it is?" How do you not know what this item is? How long have you been working here? Uh, uh, two years? How is it that you've worked here two years and you don't know what this item is? Well, Sir, have you, you haven't fucking told me what it is yet, you dipshit? So how about you stop fucking blaming me and you fart, start fucking getting your ass in your gear? <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I get so fucking angry when I hear this shit. I just fucking explode, dude. Literally, I don't know how. In all my years of fucking retail, I don't know how I haven't just flown over the fucking oh. counter and just I beat have, somebody's ass. I have just, I've story had to deal you. with that stupid shit so much before. I have a story for you. So, um, oh, please, please. Oh, no. <laughs> so, Go ahead. According to my manager, there was nothing I could have done that wouldn't have been right in the situation to the point where I, other than like dragging the man out of the store. Oh, or shit. Out, um, Okay, oh, so older elderly couple comes in. For content, our outside area, our patio, uh, the outlooks our water is first come, first serve. Which means uh, that if you let us know, like, hey, we don't have a reservation, but we'd like to sit outside. If we have a spot outside, we can seat you out there. Uh, we can't guarantee a spot inside if it starts storming or if it starts, uh, like, having really bad flies. But, you know, mm -hmm. you want some, you lose some understandable and completely you're at, reasonable. You're outside. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. cup comes in, don't have a reservation. We're like, okay, cool. Uh, well, we have our bar area, which is available, or we have our outside area, which is available. If you're wanting to sit outside, we can seat you guys out there. We just need to get your name and a, like, a phone number in case you lose something. So, the guy already, I'm pretty sure he's intoxicated, is like, oh, uh, yeah, we don't have a reservation, uh, so you said outside, and I said, yes, sir, it's outside, which is full dining, which means you're more than welcome to have drinks outside, but we do request that you order entrees. And he goes, so you're meaning that we can't order, like, just appetizers? No, sir, it's, um, entrees we prefer, just because we do have a lot of people that want to sit out there and look at the river, but we do prefer you to order food, just so we can keep in time restraints. He's like, but what if I just order soup? I mean, you can order soup, but we do just prefer you to order entrees. And he starts walking away from me, as well as his wife, which just starts walking towards the outside area. I'm like, sir, sir, I, I do need to get your name. He yells back his name. He doesn't even look at me. Yells back his name. I chased him outside, telling him, sir, I still need your phone number. And also, if you come back in here, we can seat you guys. Because, you know, we're a nice dining restaurant, not some in McDonald's. McDonald's? McDonald's. Also, hello. What do you I don't think, think she's done. <laughs> and he straight up, 
I'm not even shitting you, flips me off and starts speeding out, like, speed running his fucking phone number to me. And just sticks himself with his wife. And I'm like, are you fucking serious? So I just, I, I give up. I sit him, uh, we like basically throw him his menus because he doesn't even have menus, first off. He just sat himself. And then he mm. goes to speak to my manager, and my manager, the first thing he says to my manager is, ma'am, I have to ask you, do I look stupid? And she goes, <laughs> kind of. you, kind of you kind of are. And then you're caught off guard and is like, no, why do you, and he's like, because apparently your hostess thinks I'm stupid and can't think, uh, and doesn't think that I can seat myself outside because it's first come, first serve. And I'm like, that's not what I said, but thanks. <laughs> thanks, asshole. Mm. Probably trying to twist the narrative so he gets something out of it. Oh, yeah, free stuff. Hundred percent. Free stuff. He didn't get shit, he didn't get shit. He didn't get shit other than a warning Easiest on uh, his fucking, on his dumb shit. Yeah. Fun fact: If you ever get to see uh, anybody in your company call you an opportunity guest, or anybody uh, in a restaurant call you an opportunity guest, that means you're an asshole. <laughs> mm. <laughs> is that like at, Is that like at Disney where? If you're like a bratty piece of shit, then the staff referred to you as a very special guest. Yes, mm. it's, it's Dude, the same thing. You're an opportunity I have, guest. <laughs> I have one story. It's short. It doesn't make sense to me. Okay, worked at a place with a sub counter. Yeah. Um, yeah. Me and one of the other girls were kind of like on break, having our dinner because we didn't get like actual breaks. We just stop when there's a lull and eat something. Yeah. She's finishing Fair. when she like takes one more bite. Someone's like like knocking on the counter. Hey, can I get some service over here? She takes her one more bite. Washes her hands, puts on gloves, comes over, hey, what can I get you? And he's like, no. And he walks away. And then he goes and complains <laughs> to the cashier. And she comes Bitch, back what? and says, she comes back and says, he didn't want to be served by you because he saw you eating. Huh? What? Because I'm not allowed to eat, I guess. I mean, <laughs> oh, okay, we <laughs> ate food that is in our store, so he now decides our food that is not what he wants to eat. What? It, that should be, like, like a recommendation, like even we like the food, even though we work here. Yeah, I don't understand this logic. Uh, anyway, they're 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 they are clients. They do not have the logic. Uh, no, I no, I, I okay. We I'm gonna share. Logic. I'm gonna share my story. So <laughs> this was during my uh, graveyard shift, and this was at a time when it's like early in the morning and. Um, I'm not too accustomed to working with customers because the majority of the job is was me clearing up the store of all the trash and boxes from all the stalkers. So there was this one lady who always kept coming to me about customer service right at the minute I have to clock out and leave. And this happened like two or three times. Eventually, one of the other employees asked me to work with her and I said, dude, I have to clock out. Just work with her. Fine. And what she's asking me is either about customer service being open, which doesn't open until 10, and asking questions about alcohol, drinks, and wine, which I have a little knowledge of. So I honestly spoke to her and I said, I don't know that. Let me find some. And before I even finish, she snaps back with, of course you don't know. You always say you don't know. You don't know anything at this store, do you? I'm like, okay. Uh, I walked away. Well, if you're not satisfied with my performance, you can always get the fuck out. Nobody's stopping you from being here, cunt. <laughs> I was yeah, very right. close to snapping at her, but I know that would have cost like, me my job. I think, I think my favorite fucking thing is just when I see text or like when I see posts that have based managers in them, and the Karen tries to fucking like speak to the manager. The manager's like, "No, get fucking lost, cunt. What are you doing here? Shut the fuck yeah, up." Yeah, it's fucked. <laughs> Get fucked, Stop harassing my fucking employees, cunt, and get Dude. the fuck out of here. Golden Star was the like. Video, that reminds me of the video of the uh, the manager. Uh, fucking what is it? She straight up like the woman's yelling at a sixteen-year-old. The manager comes out and goes, "Why are you yelling at my sixteen-year-old employee? Why are you yelling at a child?" Oh, what's the, the problem? Fucking you your fucking dick in no, a twist, uh, guy. Uh, uh, <laughs> And she goes, oh, no, 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 why are you yelling at a child? I will fuck you up. <laughs> oh! Why are you uh, yelling at a child, guy, where you pushed around too much as a kid, and now you want to take it out on others because you're so sad and pathetic? Is that it? So, but only those weaker than him. 
On St. Patty's Day, uh, oh, I live in a tourist city, so that is the worst day because all of our streets down by the river are bars. So, oh, please, yeah, yeah, St. Patty's Day is the best and worst day. Uh, our, main, our biggest protocol is looking out for drunk idiots because, you know, that happens. <laughs> the obvious. Right. For obvious reasons. The stories that usually gets told around my, uh, <laughs> around my work is the time when one drunk guy started, like, harassing the essays, the hosts, and, like, started to the point where he is leaning over the little computer, uh, the desk, to, oh like, God. scream at this host who basically just told him there is no room at the bar, you're going to have to wait. That is the only thing she told him. And to the point where she's in tears because she doesn't know what to do. There's a crowd behind the guy, and the guy is acting like a fucking maniac. My uncle, who is 6'4", and is, I think at the time was like 300 pounds, uh, full beard, comes down from the oh. host stand, who, he usually is a giant teddy bear, but comes down in the sternest dad voice he can muster and goes, you need to leave. Eventually he does kick the guy out, but we get a review <laughs> the next day about On how this- On fucking staff, Yelp. Yeah. On Yelp. Uh, about how the staff was rude, and he goes, and then that <laughs> Chewbacca looking motherfucker kicked me out. <laughs> this Chewbacca looking <laughs> motherfucker. So his nickname now, every St. Patty's Day, is you Chewbacca looking motherfucker. <laughs> oh my god. That's great. Does, uh, is, does he, nicknames go for a great one. Does he embrace it by making the, uh, the Chewy growl? Oh yeah, he fucking loves that nickname. He thought it was the funniest shit. I mean, yeah. rightfully so. Yeah, right. <laughs> not bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. It only <laughs> makes it better that he's a giant fucking nerd, too. So it's like, it's just a win. Yeah. Golden story about the, you don't know anything about this story. It reminds me of a call we got when I worked at the gas station that it was like 10 minutes before we closed. We got a phone call. It was getting passed around to everyone in the store because no one could answer this guy's question. He's, he's driving as he's asking it, right? And I'm gonna save the question for last. So no one can answer. Everyone was saying it politely. Everyone was like, maybe I can help. Uh, no, maybe I can help. No. Um, I was the last one to get the phone. I'm like, hey, sir, can I help you? And he goes, no, because apparently you're all a bunch of fucking idiots. And he hung up. And then they explained to me, yeah, he's driving. He needs to come into town and get gas. It's nighttime. He's asking how much gas costs at a different gas station, not ours. It's like, oh dear. how are we supposed to know that? And why didn't you call them? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, details. Uh, details, uh, details. Um, I always <laughs> love the fucking, the missing, missing argument. It's so fucking hilarious. And it's not because like it's one across the street. It's across town. We can't see it. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. It's not even their oh, I'm Sorry for interrupting. It, it's not even it's your right. job to know I'm... about that. Missing, yeah, missing, missing, yeah, missing, missing argument, which is basically the missing, missing argument is basically like if you have an argument with somebody and they don't like they claim to not understand like what they're even arguing about, even though it's been spelled out to them. Mm. So mm. it's like, so in this case, it's like, oh, yeah, fucking, or like they'll, or. Specifically, the missing missing argument is when they try to make themselves look more sympathetic either by omitting details of the original context of the argument. So, mm -hmm. like, not bringing up the full conversation that was said and just saying, oh, he said this, this, and this. Like, oh, he's like, why did he, he's like, bitch. yeah, he told me but he was going to beat my ass. Why did you say that? Because he was, uh, yeah, he left out the part where he was fucking threatening the guy's wife or, like, whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I was told him he smelled of elderberries. <laughs> <laughs> there was, um, well, this didn't happen when I was there. Apparently, according to our coworker, we always had this one customer that pretty much our department does not like. He shows up, and he's always asking for strawberries. And half of the time, he ends up taking half of the cases we always get. Like, we get, oh, like, maybe, goes. like, we get, like, four, like maybe <laughs> eight cases of strawberries. So we put four out outside and we leave four for tomorrow and this dude always shows up going do you have strawberries with that accent and i'm like okay here how many do you need i need four strawberries I'm like okay here's your four strawberries but 
there are times where we don't have it, and he literally has to always barge into the back room, even though there's a sign on the door that says, no customer mm-hmm. should cross oh, over here. Oh, no. Yeah, he barges in always. Like, if he sees me cleaning, he's always, like, calling me, and I'm like, yes, sir? Yes, strawberries? No, no. sir, we are out of strawberries. But it gets worse apparently there was a day when i wasn't working and my other co-worker had already left for the day this motherfucker came to came into came into the building he once again asked for strawberries and my co-workers told them we are actually out of strawberries there's none in the back when they weren't looking the fucking piece of shit walked into the back room went into our cooler just to check if we weren't lying to him jesus christ called the authorities yeah Yeah, literally called the cops what the fuck that yeah, really that is like, that's like felony trespassing, my guy. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't, I, think they, I think they probably did. I think they did call the cops because there already have been instances of people fucking coming into our store and taking stuff right in front of us, mind you. They run off with fucking alcohol or shrimp. Jeez. I the still remember is, last. I know, that, I know that it's like a safety concern to not chase after people that steal shit, but I feel like a lot of employee retention would be kept if they had the opportunity to chase down a thief and beat the fuck out of him. I'm just saying. Like, it would please. be it would be oh, cathartic. It would be so fucking nice for that employee who's been fucking getting screamed at by Karens for like the entire summer to finally <laughs> just bolt over the counter and just beat somebody's fucking right. face in because they fucking thought, oh, you know what? Today's the day that I'm gonna fuck with this guy. Tell me there wouldn't be less no things more. though. I mean, like, the incentive oh, is, if I steal this and get caught, I get the shit beat out of me. I mean, yeah, no, I, I still remember... It's, no, this just, is Honestly, if, if, if employees had the opportunity <laughs> to just fight a customer, like, even if it was a set number, like, just once <laughs> a year, you had the opportunity to just fucking You have one get-out-of-jail-free... This yeah, is one get purge out of day. Free. Like, like the fucking purge, yeah, exactly. Attribution day. He's like, oh, uh, just like, oh, buddy, I've been saving up all year for a cunt just like you. Get over here. Company, you come in with custom t-shirts that say, we haven't used our card yet. <laughs> and you just, no, no, it's better yet, better yet, 90s villain style. We're wearing backward facing baseball caps. And when we see a customer we don't like, we threateningly turn the cap and it says that. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck a nice. snowflake. Yeah, no, I still remember last year because I like I I tweeted about this, um, because I was work again. This was back when I was working the graveyard shift. There was a guy who was asking for a lighter because he wanted a like because he was trying to prepare smoke, and I told him I'm sorry, I don't. Then he leans on my car. Then he elbows his fuck. He elbows my fucking window, out of just annoyance. And then he turns around. I'm like. First of all, get the fuck off my car. Second, get away from me. He then threatens to hurt me. Put your fucking hands on my vehicle one more time. You're gonna fucking lose that hand. I promise you. I would have loved to promise you. If I would, I would have just like turn on the car, roll down the window, let his hand get in, and then roll it up, and then stick his ha- like hand on there. It's like, yeah, you're coming with me. <laughs> I would just keep that. You can run. Oh yeah, no, I would do that, and then I would just call the police. Window, I just, at that point, if he elbows my window, I'm grabbing his fucking elbow, opening the door, feeding his elbow <laughs> through it, and slamming it repeatedly till it's fucking broken. Ah! Yep. You're not assault. All right, car. you want to fucking el- you want to break my shit? Don't worry, I'll break your shit, and I promise you, it's gonna hurt a hell of a lot worse. <laughs> I'll give you a lighter. You're gonna be twenty pounds lighter when your but arm no, is gone. Like, yeah, no, I would just roll the window back right. up, keep this guy's hand stuck, and then call the police so that he won't go anywhere while they come in. While they arrive oh, at the, the lot. Car helps this car stuff them. reminds me of the, uh, and this, I don't know why my brain went to this. It's fucking horrifying. It, hmm. to the fucking girl who was dragged basically, I think, a mile oh. with, uh, uh, by her backpack be- by a school bus because oh, the bus what? driver oh, didn't have to take God. the time to look over to see if all the kids were off. Good and the God. sad thing was there were two adults on that bu- um, school bus and mm. none of them noticed. This is what happens when you take a job that's dedicated to working with kids and then you just constantly tune out the kids. <laughs> yeah. I, I never fucking understood why people like that do that. Like, I, like I get it. It's a career choice and all that, and like sometimes it's not. But like, 
These are kids you're working with here. Fuck, they're, man. They're, like, they're if, you, if you're gonna be jaded, if you're gonna be jaded at the kids and just fucking tune them out, you don't need to be working with kids. You're, it's you it's can that simple. The sad thing is you can watch the video. Like, there was a moment where her book bag just gets slightly snagged and there's enough room for her to, like, at least scream out, hey, I'm stuck. And I think that's what she said she was doing. Like, hey, I'm stuck. And they still close the door all the way on her book bag and she's just fucking stuck. And I'm like, she that's get the bag off. horrifying. Yeah. That is that's so horrifying. Thing, like, like, Glad you're she, fired. Could she, not, could she not take the bag off? Was it like stuck? Or yeah, something. You know, like when, the bag was clipped the way, around. If you actually watch the video, the way the book bag was, the back of the book bag got stuck, and it looked like mm -hmm. she was trying to pull and yank it. And when the doors closed fully, they closed fully on the back of the book bag, so her arms were stuck. Oh, oh like there was so oh. much tension on the straps that her arms were stuck in them. Oh. <sighs> oh okay. Yeah, there's an actual video of it, and it's horrifying glad both teachers are fucking fired but holy it's, shit honestly fired ain't enough that's grounds for arrest I, for fucking negligence that's child like, engagement i'm pretty sure the that parents sued. i'm pretty sure the parents i fucking hope so jesus christ if my kid got dragged for a fucking mile by a school bus because the dumbass didn't fucking pay attention i'd be suing the shit out of him i'd sue the fucking school board the school district anybody any fucking iota of school that my child goes to after getting fucking dragged, all yeah. of them, all Apparently, of them are getting sued. Every single like, one. This, like, this, like, a family friend, this, what this, was it? like a family friend had said, uh, cause it wasn't even the parents that picked her up. A family friend was supposed to be picking uh, up the daughter and the only, text, the only text the mother was got was they just dragged your daughter away. Strike. Oh my and God. Like, no, like that's my bus driver. <laughs> I mean, my, my it's bus horrifying, but like, it's even more horrifying in the context of like, yeah, it, there, it's she was literally being, true, literal, actually getting dragged the fuck away. Like when and I was like, a kid, my bus driver got so, a little bit of flack because she took longer on her routes. You know why she took longer? Because she waited and watched until the kid got into their driveway or onto their property or up to their house. You know, and, yep. until she knew the kid was in a safe space where she could see them before she'd move. That's really smart. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that like they changed the route so that um when they stopped at my house, she had to stop on the left. I had to walk around the front of the bus and into my driveway. Like I really appreciate that that she waited mm -hmm. till she could see me and then went. And it's not hard. Mm -hmm. What you're supposed That's to. That's a good bus driver. That's a, yeah. great That's a good bus driver. driver. So I wish I, I wish I had better bus drivers. Okay. Cool. What I want I'm hearing about wait, your job goes to a motherfucker. Can I what? can I mention my uh. I had a badass bus driver up north. I forget his name, but we had him every year. He was great in high school. Uh, and I want to point out, this is like a really, really old black dude. Like, survived the first Great Depression old. Like, oh, old. shit! He is so Ooh. Easy. Yeah, and he was like one of these like wise-cracking, like, really laid-back, really friendly kind of guys. And it turns out he can initial D in a school bus up in New England because he totally did that once. <laughs> and he just he like doesn't he like doesn't make any note of it and doesn't even give a fuck. But he just casually initial D's on these back wooded roads in New England, going well, yeah, like you can't mention it. Otherwise, that's how they that's how you get caught. <laughs> no, but I love that. Like his expression, like never changed, regardless of any of the shit he was doing. This is me a child play. Uh, what, what, what do you think this man did for a living before a bus driver? Bomb squad. Right. <laughs> was he like a fucking... Yeah, was he like a fucking NASCAR driver or some shit? <laughs> he, was, he was the getaway driver. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what? That makes a lot more sense. He fucking... He was the getaway driver in a bank heist. It, it, yeah. it all clicks now. Can't tell you uh, which one, though. Hey, guys. Of course not. Uh, yeah, yeah, Riley? What? Uh, did you see the recent news from Tesla? No. No, they what happened? Mine. They made uh, a robot. They, they, we have robots <coughs> now, apparently. We've also, had robots. Uh, we've had robots for a while. What's special? <laughs> they're, they're, well, they're still in yeah. the experiment. They're still in the experiment process, aren't they? Yeah, but I think the, if I, anybody can I make still think the funniest, dream, no, I still think that the funniest thing ever that mm -hmm. Tesla ever did wasn't this robot thing. Elon Musk is like, hey, I'm making a 25k Tesla, which is great, because I would love a 25k Tesla. That'd be awesome. 
but he but then he just casually mentions in the presentation i just reinvented battery technology so now i can get 700 miles on a 15 minute charge and he left it as like a footnote <laughs> how i'll say it once i'll say it again elon musk is fucking insane Ca oh i want to make a cheaper car casually reinvents the fucking battery I'm just getting uh, the Mitchells versus the Machines flashbacks, honestly. Dog, pig, dog, pig, dog. Loaf of bread. System error. Big, 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 big. I mean, <laughs> rewatch that film. I mean, what it's... I love about Musk the most is I love it when he's bored. <laughs> I'm bored. It is fun when creative people else. get bored. No, like, what I found so funny was that the Tesla flamethrower was an April Fool's joke, but the joke was that he was totally serious and he sold 4,000 of them. He also just carried one around. Well, yeah, I mean, wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, I, I want to point out, uh, last I checked, a flamethrower is totally legal in about 40 U.S. states. Good. 40 U.S. states still got their heads screwed on right. Uh, Again, so, he is insane, and I love every minute of it. So, <laughs> so uh, actually, so, now that I, oh, God, go I'm, this, I'm not this kid. That, that, that was me. Yeah, no, I mean. Okay, all I'm right. So corrected his error. Yeah. Okay, it's 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 sometimes under doubt. Anyway, um, you guys heard about uh, the event? Uh, I think it was about a week ago. It was an airline incident where a guy who was drunk off his ass acted so entitled, thinking that he's like a part of a rich family. Yeah, it, like it got so bad that the uh, flight attendants had to tape him to a chair. Yeah. I remember that. I, that. I, I love remember that, that story. Really Critical talked about it. Yeah, yeah, now Critical cool. talked about it, Optimus talked about it. Oh, there have been clips. Like, this dude is like, My parents are worth a million fucking dollars! Or some shit like that. It's like, buddy, too bad calm your... You Only a million? We're not even in this game. Right. Your parents are in American Airlines. Calm the fuck down, okay? You're in the back of the Your parents are worth that much money, but you're in economy. Actually, he was, um, he was on Frontier Airlines, which is actually the cheapest airline. Oh, that makes it even stupid! Oh man, that just makes him look stupider. Cheaper than Spirit? Probably. No, it wasn't Spirit. Spirit. It wasn't okay. Spirit. Spirit's the ones that've been constantly canceling flights and people begin no, no. pissed no, off about it. Cheaper than that. I just had them over the weekend. They were cheap as fuck, though. Hmm. Yeah, he, uh, he was asking cheaper than Spirit. Time too. Yeah. Nah, it was a frontier. Like in the, I don't think like, I would ever fly Spirit, not gonna lie. Like, if you want to fly out at four in the morning, you can find some cheap flights. You, well, it's not- I mean, here's the thing about Spirit. The, yes. the flights themselves might be cheap, but then you have all the uh, the cost for luggage and shit that they tack mm. on. Well, no, yeah. here's the thing, because I got a hacker fare ticket, it only included a, pers a personal item, so it doesn't include any baggage, um, for a $200 ticket, and also, the plane looks like it it was only kept up to like 90 spec you don't have really have a tray it's the size of like two playing cards put next to each other i've seen uh, those yeah and there's no uh infotainment display of any kind like i know i don't use that anyway but i sometimes like if there's a map because i kind of like knowing where mm -hmm. the country i am because that's fun I like, like when you have to a charger or like a outlet yeah. so you can plug your phone uh, in the your best flight so nice. best yeah. flight i ever had was alaskan airlines Huh. Oh, Alaska was pretty good. But like Alaska and Virgin, because Virgin bought them out, so effectively they're both the same thing. Yeah. Alaskan but... Virgin. Oh, yeah, Alaska, Alaska, Alaska Virgin. <laughs> if you go oh, full Alaska Virgin, the, yeah, the flights are basically Aeon. the same. But they have a free map, and that's cool, and free radio, and that's cool. Aeon. And and radio. Yes, Riley. What, Riley? Thousand feet. Yeah, you, guys you guys remember the story that I told oh, you about of my flight back from Babscon? Oh, uh, really? no, what no. happened? Okay, so I had gotten an Alaskan Airlines ticket. So I went to the Alaskan Airlines uh, thing. They told Airlines. me I had to go to the Virgin thing. I'm like, okay, I'll go to the Virgin <laughs> thing. And go to the Virgin me, line, Riley. And then I got told I had to go <laughs> check my bag. Line. I had you to go check what? my bag in the Alaskan line. And keep oh. in mind, the Alaskan Airlines and the Virgin Airlines sections of the airport were like Far away. complete separate buildings. So mm. I had to keep taking the fucking monorail back and forth. I was almost late for my flight. Thankfully, it was delayed. Jeez. By the time you got to the second counter, be like, can, can you please call the previous counter I was at because they sent me here? 
Yeah, basically. <clears throat> right? That really sounds like it sucks. Alright, so... Pain, but... I'm gonna have to... Question... Alright, mm. what's your question? My question is... Uh, why the fuck isn't there, like, a minimum time of, like, an hour in between flights whenever you buy them? Oh, there's, the like, layovers? There's, like... <coughs> There's Sorry. hundreds of flights available to the area that you're going to. There should be like a minimum of an hour if you're going on a connecting flight. Because I've had so many fucking instances where it's like, okay, you're gonna land at exactly this time and you're gonna have 20 minutes to make it all the way across to the other terminal because that's where your connecting flight is. Or like you're gonna have 15 minutes to just fucking sprint the whole f mm -hmm. Thank God I was in shape at the time, because I never would have made half those fucking flights otherwise. Like, I fucking marathoned up and down the fucking airport so many <laughs> goddamn times whenever I went on leave, because it was just like, okay, yeah, uh, we're gonna put you in fucking Concourse A, your connecting flight's gonna be in fucking Concourse, uh, the fucking letter of the alphabet that doesn't exist yet. Double Z. Uh, yeah, fucking double quintuple XY. Concourse whatever. Omega Q. <laughs> yeah, it's actually on the icy planet. Uh, of We're not going to give you any transportation to get there. Good fucking luck. You have 15 uh, minutes. Chinese <laughs> letter so at sign Q. Ampersand. Mark star exclamation point. Like 15 minutes to go from A to <laughs> Lambda. <laughs> yeah, right. You All right, 15 so. 15 minutes to go from concourse one to the ending letter of pi. Oh. <laughs> okay, so Infinite. on. On that note, I think it's time I wrap up the stream, what? What and I have to go pick up my girlfriend at Planet Fitness. Hope oh. this uh, oh. extra Golden push. Rooney? What? What? He's gone. He died. Uh, Can he, he hear me? To the game. Hello. Oh, oh, no fuck. No. Maybe he was talking to Chrissy instead of us. Can uh, he hear me? Oh, uh, what the no, fuck something happened? I did on the Spirit Airline because it was okay. I had a book. I read it when I was on my way there, but on the way back, I'm gonna be like, I'm. I know because I had to get up early. I'm probably gonna to be too tired. So I thought, what's something that all of my friends have done, or all the friends who got me into this have done, that I can do because I'm in Michigan, and Michigan is recreationally legal. So uh, my brilliant ass <laughs> ate 15 milligrams of legit edibles and then just sat on the plane. And I remember I spent all, like, the entire flight just flopping in and out of sleep because there's nowhere to rest your head at all and your seat doesn't recline. Mm -hmm. But it was like, this would be a hellish experience. But if I were not stoned. Yeah, but because of this, I don't care. I'm just relaxed. Like, you are completely zen. Turbulence does not bother you at all. <laughs> I, I mean, like, honestly, that just seems like the, the strategy is just like, all right, I'm going to be on a 14-hour flight on a really shitty airline. Let me just load up on Indicas so I fucking conk out. Dude, yeah, am, really I, am I weird that I enjoy air travel? Like, all of no. it. No, I, I do I, like I air travel. Like, I enjoy every... air travel, too. I just don't like all the caveats that it comes with. Yeah. Dude, I, for some reason, I like those. Some of them are very stupid, but I like, okay, packing, like, liquids and everything. Um, let me see, the carry-on bag, waiting at the airport, figuring out the gate, and being like, dude, this is easy. Look at the list of flights, look where I need to go, there's signs directing me there. Getting on the plane, doing all the stuff, everyone else is complaining about, oh, the seat, uh, the carry-on, the list. It's like, it's easy, you ever played Tetris? You stick it up there, sit in your seat, get a book, ride the sky bus, you're good! <laughs> Okay, so apparently we can't hear Golden, but the stream can. We can't- Wait, really? Oh, I thought he left. Oh, oh well, that's oh. weird. That's so what? weird! That is weird. That is strange. It's weird and unusual. Us? Golden, uh, have you tried leaving Most the chat and coming back in? Or yeah, leaving the call and coming back in? Try exiting the call and coming back. <laughs> Maybe you at all. Alright, so let's try that. Give it a few seconds and... We can hear- Can you hear me? Can you oh, hear me? Okay. Nope. We can't hear you saying anything. Yep. There is oh, there is no cool. Uh check your Discord settings to make sure that it didn't fucking like change your microphone on you or some shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can hear him on the stream when I unmute that. That's so bizarre. Eh? That's weird. Are you sure it's not just because of a delay or 
No, I mean, on, on the st I unmuted the stream and you can hear him on the stream, so. Hmm. His computer's picking him up, just Discord. Oh, he's oh. on P's <coughs> computer. On he's, yeah. This is... Um... Confusing. Yeah, but he okay. didn't just change computers, so he's been Did on you... this one the whole stream, didn't he? And it's not like he's muted the physical microphone himself, because then otherwise they wouldn't be able to hear him either, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, con I'm confused here. I'm also confused. Conflicted. Uh, Conversation. Hey, when, when did but Golden? Lacking. When did Golden stop making noises? He that was when he said something. And we yeah, he started, started asking him, "What did you say? What did you say?" And we thought he left. Yeah. Oh. Did he touch anything? Oh, well, did you touch anything that around that time, that. Golden? Okay. Fuck. Um. <laughs> This might be a good time to close the stream and we'll figure this out when people aren't watching us. Oh, try um, try closing Discord in Task Manager and reopening the whole thing. Mm. Yeet. <coughs> Alright, I'll try that. Yeah, uh... Riley Border, 10 out of 10. I don't know what the fuck happened. I seriously hope that it's not the mic itself or some shit like that. Because I can't screw around with key settings. Uh, oh. So I know you guys can hear me. But it's okay because it's cool. You okay, feel like you're in hyperspace. Still? I mean, the way Fuck. That I see it is just like if something goes. Whatever. Uh, apparently, things have to end it a little more abruptly than usual. I was giving out my closing statements, but Discord wanted to be a little shit, so sorry about that. I'll catch, um, I'll catch you guys later. I hope this shit gets taken care of. I'm sure Key knows what to do because it's her computer. So, anyways. Uh, yeah, I'll catch you later.